Hey everybody, so I'm here in Zurich at my brother's apartment. I'm visiting him. Uh, he moved here about a year ago for work and this is the first time I'm getting a chance to come visit him because I am in my off season. I'm currently taking about a three week break. Well, kind of like four weeks, but the fourth week I'm gonna get back into a little bit of more scheduled or structured physical activity before I hit the first week of my real training block for uh, fall season training. But anyway, all of that aside, I'm on a break right now and I'm here in Switzerland. So I'm gonna go explore a little bit today. And also I'm gonna take this opportunity to talk a little bit about um, what I do in my off season, what's probably common amongst most, most athletes during their off season. And I wanna to touch a bit on some things that I struggle with Personally, that I think maybe some of you can relate to, even as um, just just being someone who's active, just being someone who likes to work out, and then you have to take a break. How do you navigate that? What are the struggles that might inherently come with someone who is like really kind of addicted or just gets a lot of energy from working out and has a period when they don't get to do that? So yeah, that's what we'll talk about today. take a scooter to go down into the city because the walk is about 45 minutes but I'm really glad I didn't because it's such a pretty day and Zurich is really beautiful like living in the Netherlands you don't get to see so much nature like integrated into the city um, and yeah all the waterways and I got to stop in that cute little marked hall which was nice so so I found this really cute little cafe well I looked it up online of course I always see that. But it looks really cute. It's called Kraftwerk or Kraftwerk. I don't know how it's pronounced in Swiss German. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna go chill in there for a bit. Read. I have nowhere to be and nothing to do. No responsibilities. Feels really nice to just go somewhere and have a coffee. <laughs> I'm back home now and it was really nice walking around the city. Um, the weather was nice, which it wasn't supposed to be, so I felt really grateful for that. But now I have a chance to talk a bit about what I brought up earlier, which was um, giving some insight into what athletes do in their off season and some of the things that I struggle with during my off seasons. So basically I think everyone takes, well, I can't say everyone, but on average, um, people take a minimum of two weeks off in their off season and for track and field that occurs sometime before athletes start their fall training and I think that's quite different for everyone but for me I'm going to start fall training mid-October this year and this year has been really strange in terms of scheduling because of coronavirus so things are a bit different. I think in the past I have started earlier because um, the season would have ended earlier, but this season got pushed out, you know, pretty long. So, yeah, we will start later. <sighs> okay, so one of the things I struggle with during the off season is anxiety. So I get pretty anxious about not being able to work out um, because it's what I do 
what I do as my career, what I do every day, what I'm used to scheduling my life around, you know, how I'm gonna get to the track, what meals will I prepare to fuel, how will I recover, am I getting enough sleep, all of these things, I kind of methodically think out to support my career. Everything is kind of lined up throughout the fall season, the pre-season, and especially in season to help me jump as high as possible. So when I get to these puny little two weeks, oh my gosh, it's, it's pretty ridiculous how, how short that amount of time is, but how long it feels because I get so anxious, I cannot even tell you. So that's a huge struggle for me. And over the years, I've found different ways to cope. Um, the biggest one being I try to schedule myself into some kind of activity or trip or family time so that I can kind of like refill the tank with other things because I definitely think of physical activity and exercise as something that gives me energy, something that, um, yeah, even though I'm uh, tiring myself out physically, spiritually, mentally, like just as a person, those things fill me up. So in the two weeks that I have off, I try to do other things that kind of like fill my tank back up. And visiting family, taking a trip, like I'm doing right now, definitely checks that box. Um, another thing that I've been trying to do is just to be mindful in those moments when I'm most anxious about what the facts are, what the reality of the situation is. So I would remind myself things like, this time of rest is necessary. This time of rest allows my career to be sustainable. This helps me to heal a bit from any um, injuries that might be creeping up, that might have been getting kind of like, getting a little bit worse than I would have liked them to towards the end of the season. This is the chance for me to heal from those. Uh, yeah. So those things I try to remind myself. Um, I know many people who are watching this might not be professional athletes themselves, but if you are an amateur athlete, if you exercise, if you work out, if you do any kind of physical activity and you enjoy it, which I hope you do, um, maybe you can relate to this, this kind of like anxious feeling when you don't get the opportunity to work out. And I think there is kind of a healthy level of um, a pressure about getting your next workout in when you've missed a couple of them. But there definitely is a line to be drawn when that uh, increases and develops into a really uncomfortable, like overwhelming anxiety about when you can get it in or like uh, you're, you're starting to think about food in terms of hours of working out or um, you're starting to think of uh, all of your non-exercise physical activity like walking or getting from the store, cycling and trying to kind of like piece those together to make a workout during your rest time. Um, I don't know if you guys can relate to any of those. I hope you can, but those are definitely things that I have found myself thinking and then kind of just tried to stop the thought and go, whoa, 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 like that's not a road I want to go down. Um, yeah, I, I guess with anything that you really love to do, or anything that you're extremely passionate about, you kind of always have to re-evaluate where the lines get drawn around that passion such that it doesn't overflow into other areas of your life and start to control and dictate how you do other things or how you live your life outside of that passion. Yeah, so those are just my thoughts on that. Yeah, so I hope this is helpful for somebody watching. Um, I hope that the next time you feel yourself or you are thinking along those really unhealthy lines of I need to work out, I can't rest, I can't take a day off, that you 
find the logic and sound reasoning behind why rest periods are good for you in the first place. Think of them as part of your training block rather than a departure from it because it's a necessary time for your body to recuperate, to rebuild, to put things back together so that at the end of that rest period you can hit the ground running and achieve all of those huge goals that you've set for yourself. And if you neglect that rest period, then you're just going to be pushing those goals further and further away. Trust me, I have done it the wrong way before and I have learned my lesson. So hopefully this is inspiring to someone. And please, if you have comments or you wanna share your own experience, shoot me a comment, send me a message. I would love to hear about it, especially during this time while I'm taking a break. I have a lot of time to spend, um, yeah, online doing different things, chatting with people, learning about how other people approach their rest period. So yeah. All right, guys, until next time, peace. Thank you.